Amen. Thank you, Sarah and Larry, for your always wonderful blessing of music. Will you stand as you're able for this morning's scripture lesson from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14. Hear these words. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come to you and say, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that when the host comes, he may say, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers and sisters or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. And you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Thank you. You may be seated. I'm sure you have as well, but I've been invited to some really nice dinner parties before. I've been invited to some very nice receptions and banquets and all sorts of things like that. And when I read this gospel passage from Luke chapter 14, I I wonder sometimes what would be the response if I went to one of those exquisite affairs and I was an invited guest, and I stood up and said, you know, I think the seating chart here is all wrong. Uh, I think so-and-so needs to move over here, and you there in the back, you need to move over here. And I noticed some people out in the street on my way in, uh, you know, that weren't invited, but I'm kind of just declaring that they're not invited. Go out and get them, tell them to come on in. Uh, I have a feeling that I would be shown the door uh, right away. But that's exactly what Jesus does in this passage of scripture right really right in the face of the host when you have a big affair when you have a banquet don't invite your friends and brothers and rich uh, neighbors they're just going to return the favor no when you throw a feast invite the poor the crippled the lame the blind this was Jesus's challenge to the host there in Luke 14 and the truth is it's still Jesus's challenge to us because most people and I'm assuming you're here to worship today because you want to be close to Jesus you want to be where Jesus is so if you want to be where Jesus is you need to understand this is the kind of affair that he would be at invite the poor the crippled the lame the blind we all want Jesus to come to our house sometimes what we forget is when Jesus comes to our house he's always going to bring his friends always going to bring his friends and these are his friends so what does Jesus challenge us with today well first of all Jesus says we need to revise our guest list revise our guest list and it is quite a marginal guest list to say the least right poor the crippled the lame the blind but I mean that in a different way Jesus's guest list has to do with those who have been pushed to the margins so in that sense it's a marginalized guest list. The guests and the friends that Jesus brings to his feasts 
are those that others have pushed aside and pushed out and pushed away. That's why every week we try to remind one another, and uh, that's one of the disadvantages, I suppose, of reading it every week, because sometimes it can fall on deaf ears. We're called to reach out to the least, the last, the lonely, the left out. This is the guest list of Jesus, and he invites us to revise our guest list to be in alignment with him. You know, I had a professor that uh, we always had to write a final paper, and it was quite a task when you're in college to think about writing a final paper, but what made it easier in his class was that he let us submit a rough draft. And we would submit the rough draft, and then he would write in the margins for us, see this source, expand upon this idea, and mark up the paper, give it back to you, and then all you had to do was read his margin comments, his marginal comments, and incorporate that into your paper, and you were well on your way to a good grade. I loved it. Just read the margins. Friends, spiritually speaking, and in our discipleship, that's what Jesus is inviting us to do today. That's what he's saying to the guests who had gathered there. Read the margins. The answer that you're looking for usually won't come from the mainstream. It will come from the margins. So invite them, listen to them, get to know those folk. There's more of an answer there than you ever dreamed or imagined. Now, you know, when it comes to writing papers, I, like others, when I was younger, I discovered that if you had to write a 10-page paper and you increased the font size just a little bit, and if you made your margins a little bit wider than prescribed, and maybe even to stretch the double space to two and a half, man, there was less room for your own material when you widened those margins. Now, for those younger ones in our group today, that's a bad idea in class. <laughs> that's a bad idea for classroom conduct. But friends, listen, it's a good idea for discipleship. What I mean by that is, is when we widen our margins by looking to those who've been marginalized, there's less room for our own material. That is, there's less time for me to focus purely upon myself and my own needs because I'm increasing my activity in the margins of our culture. And that's the guest list that Jesus calls us to. If we want to do justice and love mercy and walk humbly with God and follow after Jesus, we need to revise our guest list. So, you know, there's one of those things that you maybe call it uh, an extreme just a closer walk strategy one. An, an extreme closer walk strategy one. What if, as we get things started back again, what if, what if every fellowship meal we made an intentional effort to invite someone we wouldn't normally invite? What if every meal of every church became a mission meal? What if when we threw a banquet or a time of recognition, even here at our church for others, that we made an effort to invite those who are on the margins? What would that look like? What would it look like in your own life? It's a challenge, but Jesus says to follow me. If you want to be where I am, revise your guest list. Secondly, Jesus says rearrange your seating chart. Don't demand or be admired for taking the higher seat. Humble yourself. Take the lower seat. Then your Father who is in heaven will be the one who decides your honor and your reward. God's the host. God's the host. So we need to rearrange our seating chart according to his word and his way. Dan Harnack tells the story of going to a Rolling Stones concert some years ago. A big Rolling Stones fan, and he said, tickets are hard to come by. Most of the Rolling Stones concerts, even if they gave one today, would be sold out. And he said, such was the case with this one. And he said, we're waiting there at the arena to go inside. And he said, I noticed a young couple, a young man, and what well, was probably his date there. And, and they obviously didn't have a ticket because they were looking around, hoping maybe a scalper or somebody else might be able to, they would buy a ticket on the spot and get into the Rolling Stones concert. It wasn't going to happen. It wasn't going to happen. Hardneck says, I'm standing in this line. I'm watching this off to the side. Nobody's going to give it up. Not at all. And he said, when it became apparent that this 
wasn't going to happen. He said the young lady kind of began to cry a little bit, get very emotional. And then Harnack says, then it happened. He said an older couple, and he comments, much older than me, walked up to this young couple, and he said the gentleman reached in his pocket, and he pulled out two tickets, and he handed it to them. And then they went on their way to the parking lot. He said the young lady fooled with her phone for a moment, evidently consulting the seating chart in the arena, because then she yelled out, Oh my goodness, we're right up front! Oh my goodness, we're right up front! Just that one act, Harnack says, I couldn't believe they did it. I would have never done it. But there it was. Friends, there are some, uh, hear me, There are some people that never, ever have the opportunity to get an up-close look at what life can really be because the circumstances and situations of their life have pushed them to the back. And so they don't have the view that many of you have been privileged to have. They've never had a front row seat to what joy feels like, to what life feels can be. And it's up to us as followers of Jesus Christ to rearrange that seating chart a bit, to take the humble seat so that someone else might be able to get a front row seat to everything that life can be. Everything that life can be. So I suppose an extreme closer walk strategy number two would be what if we had a an auction for tickets and we have tickets and we're going to auction them off right here we're going to auction off a ticket now if you're the highest bidder for this ticket you get the privilege of serving the meal at the mission if you're the highest bidder for this ticket you get the opportunity to host a revived recovery meal if you're the highest bidder for this you get to make a donation to heart and hand mission project if you're the highest bidder for this you get to volunteer on on a day down at the shepherd's corner but you have to be the highest bidder Well, everybody said, what do you mean? Who's going to bid on that? Why would I bid on something that doesn't benefit me? Exactly. Exactly. That's what it means to rearrange the seating charts of our lives, of our discipleship, and of our service. If we want to be where Jesus is and do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with him, there's some rearranging that needs to happen. Third, Jesus says you need to rework your meal plan. Rework your meal plan. What does a kingdom feast look like? If Jesus threw a banquet, he's a guest at this banquet, if Jesus threw a banquet, what would it look like? What does a kingdom meal look like? What's a kingdom banquet? I've often wondered that in reading this. Well, one, one church maybe extreme closer walk strategy number three, one church went to a nursing home and had a banquet there. There in the dining area, they set it up just like you would any banquet. They brought the residents in to eat, but this time it was a banquet. They rejoiced with some music. They had recognition. They had scouted the place out with the help of the, the help there, and they had awards. They're so-and-so. We're going to give you an award for having, they say you have the best smile this week. We're going to give you an award. You were this. And they gave out awards to all of the residents. They came up with something to offer everyone. And there they were at a banquet, recognized. And there was joy in the air again in a place where sometimes there is little joy in the air in a place that sometimes is characterized by lonely hearts, there were joyful hearts because someone took the time to rework the plan and to recognize them. That can be the difference. You know, when I served in the United Methodist Temple over on Locust Avenue in Clarksburg, we had a wedding one time on Saturday. They were going to have the little reception in the fellowship hall there, just some finger food, some little sandwiches, and some cake. And as was often the case, uh, over there, anytime there was a, a meal or there seemed to be activity, there were four or five people from the area, from the street, that would kind of wander over to the church. This happened on this Saturday as well. They came down to the fellowship hall door, figuring maybe it was a meal, but it was a, it was a wedding reception. But the father of the bride happened to be out at the entryway. 
And, and, and you're kind of watching. Here they are. Well, we thought, sorry, one of them said, we thought this was a, a fellowship dinner. Oh, well, don't go away, the father of bride said. We, we have some seats over here. Come on in. Come on in. Wedding reception, no doubt. Come on in. You can sit over there. We've just got some fingers foods. One of them, a little more vocal, but not understanding everything. So you, you mean you don't have any chicken? And he said, no, we just got some sandwiches and some cake. But the father slipped over to his teenage son. At that time, if you know of Clarksburg, there was a KFC right there. The son went over and bought a bucket of chicken. And the dad brought it in said, here you go. Here you go. Friends, that's Luke 14. There it is. Reaching out. Reworking the meal plan. This is our call if we want to be where Jesus is. In closing, when I served the church up in downtown Morgantown, I was invited to a very nice a banquet affair down at the Hotel Morgan. Hotel Morgan's the lower end of High Street, my church, Wesley Church at the time's at the upper end. I parked at my church and walked down. Beautiful, very fancy, very nice, all the trimmings. I finished up and I was walking back up the street uh, to my car and I saw in the distance a man that I knew because I saw him about every week down there. He was a homeless, one of the homeless in the area, tall guy, gray hair, never said much. But if you, as you came by him, the way he would do it, he would hold out his hand, which was usually quivering, and he would say, I'm looking for some change, looking for some change. And I would usually give him some dollars or coins or whatever I happened to have on my person at the time. Well, there was a young couple that had been to the same banquet I was, and they were several yards, several yards in front of me. And I knew they were going to approach this gentleman before I did. And I knew that he was going to approach them. That's what he did. You know, he used to look around in the, in the, in the uh, changes of, of newspaper boxes, trying to pick up coins anywhere he could. But, so this young couple comes near him, and sure enough, I could see him step towards them with his hand, and I knew he was saying, looking for some change, just looking for some change. And the young man reacted almost violently. And, and he said, Jesus Christ, get away from us. And he moved over here to walk around him. And they went on their way. I'm coming up, of course, he that knows me, recognizes, and again, but same words, that's pretty much all he said, looking for some change, I'm looking for some change. So I took a few bucks out and put it in his hand, and this time he just kind of held it for just a moment. And normally, and shame, to my shame, I say normally in those cases, I don't look people in the eye very much then, but I did this time. I looked in the eyes of this gentleman that I'd seen many times, and even though the young man prior was using the Lord's name in vain, his words still were echoing in my head, Jesus Christ. And I looked in this gentleman's eyes, and he looked at me looking for some change. And I thought to myself, is this the same homeless guy that I pretty much see every week? Or is it Jesus? Or maybe both. And maybe it was Jesus looking for some change here. Let us pray. Lord, we fill up our menus with lots of activities. We have our own plans, our own arrangements that we make, oftentimes ignoring the very people that you reached out to. We pray today that as we move through this week, you would make us mindful of the margins. Someone may simply need a word of encouragement. Someone may need a deed of loving kindness. May we not ignore them, for in doing so, we ignore you. Show us again who you are. Show us again where you spend your time. 
And in light of that, show us again who we're called to be. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen.